what I believe is the only way to get dominion over sin. It's the only way I've seen after all these years of preaching. First of all, let me begin by saying that man cannot save himself. He cannot deliver himself from the power of sin. It is impossible. It has to be the work of God by His Spirit. God sent the Old Covenant to take away those feelings of holiness out of you till you get Christ holiness. God had a problem. He still has a problem. Before you can have dominion over sin, God has to work out these problems. And I see two major problems, two things that have to be accomplished in man before God can deliver him from his besetting sin. First of all, God has to get the sin-bound man. He says, the first thing he has to do is get you to want to be free. He has to bring us to the place where we have to cry out, I want out of this. I don't want to carry it anymore. Because man, in his natural self, in his own nature, does not want to be delivered from his sin. He wants to toy with it. He wants Jesus in his sin at the same time. He really doesn't want to be delivered even though he says he does. And if he wants to be delivered, it's only because of the pain it causes him and the guilt. But you see, God has to bring forth something in the heart of man, something that causes this man more than anything else in the world to want to be free from his sin. Problem number two that God has. How does he get this man to come to the end of himself and all of his human efforts to break himself free and then to cast himself and it's the only hope that he has in Christ Jesus. How does God bring a man to the end of his strength? How is he going to do this? How does God accomplish to bring a sin-bound man to give up the fight and lay down his human pride and come like a dead man to the cross? This is all accomplished by what the Bible calls the Old Covenant. The Bible says there are a number of covenants, but in Hebrews, in each chapter, the writer is dealing with two covenants, and you and I are living either under the Old Covenant or the New Covenant. Christians live for all their lifetime, many live under the Old Covenant. They never do get into the New Covenant. Some of you sitting in, you're under the Old Covenant, unless God sets you free, you're going to go out under the Old Covenant. And you will never be free. You will always be bound by your sin. You will never understand freedom. You will understand the glory of the cross when you are under the Old Covenant. And you've got to come by faith into the new covenant. God says in the old covenant, if you will obey my voice and keep my covenant, ye shall be unto me a holy nation. Obey my voice and I will be your God. It depended on absolute, total obedience. Obedience. By the law is the knowledge of sin. The law was given so that we can we could know our hearts, we could know how helpless, how sinful, how wicked we are with this Adam nature, that every mouth must be stopped, and all the world become guilty before God. A man has to acknowledge he's guilty. You see, the new covenant has nothing to say to the man who wants to continue in his sin. Nothing. The New Covenant completely is designed, totally designed for a sin-sick soul who says, I am tired of my sin. I don't want to grieve the heart of God. It's more than just getting to heaven. It's more than just getting rid of my guilt. I know what the Word says. I know how holy my God is. I want to be in communion with Him. I want to love Him. I want His power, His authority in my life. I want victory over my sin. That's the man, that's the woman who gets the new covenant. It's not written for anybody else. Nobody else will understand it. God would rather have you go soberly to His throne, confess your total inability to obey His commandments, acknowledge your absolute, utter helplessness and tell God, I surrender. I come as a dead man. I come as a dead woman. And all my strivings, I have failed. I come to you to trust you first. Now, Lord, accomplish these two things, these two problems you've always had with men. Bring me now through it, Lord. I confess that I can't do it. I confess that I want to be delivered from my sin. Now, folks, if you don't want deliverance, you're still not allowing the old covenant to do its work. You can get so hard hearing this word of God. That's why the word comes. That's why often even the law is preached in love only as a mirror to get you to want to be free and to show you the exceeding sinfulness of the sin. Now, if you're dead to any hope or ambition of doing it on your own, now you're ready to hear about the new covenant. I want to talk to you about the blessing of the new covenant.
the blessing of the new covenant. Get you out of the old into the new. Remember what he said, I'm going to make a new covenant with you, a new agreement. Not like the old one made with your fathers. This is a better covenant made on better promises. Read verse with me, verses 25 and 26, third chapter of Acts. Talking about the blessing of the covenant. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Now who is the seed of Abraham? Jesus Christ. And all who believe in him. He said the whole earth will be blessed by Christ. He will be blessed. Now listen to the next verse. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to what? Bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Listen to the words. God, having raised up his son, sent him to bless you. Think of this sin-bound man who's the old covenant's accomplished his work. Now he said, I really want to be free. I can't free myself. One, God is determined to set you free, and he's made an oath to do it. Number two, you can't do it yourself under your own strength, and that's why he gave the old covenant to prove it to you. And number three, he has promised to send the Holy Ghost to do in you everything he commands you to do. This is the glory of the new covenant. This is the blessing of the new covenant. Everything God expects, if God expects under the new covenant, perfect obedience. Absolute obedience. Jesus, through the Holy Ghost, was perfectly obedient to the Heavenly Father. I'm not talking about sinless perfection, but I'm telling you that it's possible for the Holy Ghost to overcome and subdue your sins. Cross the dominion of them. What is the blessing? To turn you from your iniquities. Folks, all I have to do is believe my God has the resources. The Holy Ghost has the power. He's going to come. Oh, we said so many words, but can't you understand? God made an oath. He made a covenant. He cannot lie. That has to grip our inner man. This has to grip our very life. And until the Holy Ghost makes that real, until I begin to see it accomplished in my life, even though there may be some times of failure in trying to yield to Him, it's just in the failure of yielding. But until that happens, the Holy Ghost is loving and patient and kind. And he'll not cast you away in the process. There's a step out of the old covenant. You can step out right now and say, Pastor Dave, I am tired. What it is, I am fed up. I'm sick and tired of trying to do this on my own. If you'll tell God that and mean it, and you convince yourself and come to this death, there is a power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That can overcome that besetting sin. I want to be free so that I can commune with the Lord and I want to be close to Him. I want to draw nigh to Him.